In the earlier videos, we first introduced the Skateman problem with two decision variables and three constraints, including the non-negativity constraint. We then added three more constraints. Because there were only two decision variables, we could represent the problem graphically and demonstrate the optimal corner point principle. When we add one more decision variable, pool runners, we can no longer find the optimal solution graphically. Recall that the linear programming formulation for this version of the problem looks like this. The decision variables are x1, the weekly production rate of sporty boards, x2, the weekly production rate of fancy boards, x3, the weekly production rate of pool runner boards, and z is the amount of profit skate manning corporation earns per week. The objective function is to maximize z, which is 15x1 plus 35x2 plus 20x3. We had four constraints plus the non-negativity constraints. Our constraints were shaping time, trucks, North American maple, and Chinese maple, which are 5x1 plus 15x2 plus 4x3 less than or equal to 2400, 2x1 plus 2x2 plus 2x3 is less than or equal to 700, 7x2 is less than or equal to 840, 7x1 plus 7x3 is less than or equal to 1470, and x1, x2, and x3 are non-negative variables. In this video, we will show you how to solve this linear programming decision problem using Excel Solver. All the instructions are based on the assumption that you're using Microsoft Excel 2010. The majority of the steps for using Solver are the same in all versions of Excel. However, there are a few differences. Solver is an add-in to Excel that is stored in the software but not activated by default. You will need to make sure that Solver has been activated as a current add-in to Microsoft Excel. Open Excel and go to Data menu. If Solver has already been added and activated, you should be able to see its icon at the top right of the menu in the Analysis section. If it is not available in the Data menu, you need to add it yourself. To add Solver, first go to Options at the bottom of the File menu window. After the Excel Options window appears, click on Add-ins in the left column. At the bottom of the Add-ins window, there is a drop-down box. Make sure that the Excel Add-ins is selected. Then click Go. The Add-ins window appears. Finally, check the box for Solver Add-in and click OK. Now if you return to the Data menu, you should see the Solver icon. With Solver installed, we begin modeling Skateman. You need to set up a spreadsheet which includes all of the formulation information for the Skateman problem. The attached spreadsheet has all of the data from the formulation. There are rows for the decision variables, objective function, and each of the constraints. Cells A1 to A3 show a general description of the problem and that we are going to maximize the objective function. This will help you remember the problem when you return to your spreadsheet later. Row 5 shows the names of the decision variables. This row does not play a role in solving the problem. It is just a reminder to show what each decision value is referring to. Row 6 is assigned to the values of the decision variables. At this point, we we'll leave these cells empty and they are treated as zeros by Excel. Ultimately, Solver is going to find the optimal values. It's a good idea to fill in the cells containing these values with a color to make it easy to find them. Row 8 shows the coefficients of each decision variable in the objective function. These are the profits for each type of skateboard. Finally, the constraints of the problem are given in rows 11 to 14. A description of each constraint is given in column A. The coefficients of decision variables are listed in columns B to D. 
Remember that the non-negativity constraints do not need to be written in this spreadsheet because Solver has an option that makes all decision variables non-negative. Next, we need to write the formulas for calculating the value of the objective function. Remember that the objective function of the problem is z equal to 15x1 plus 35x2 plus 20x3. That is, 15 is multiplied by the weekly production rate of sporty boards, 35 is multiplied by the weekly production rate of fancy boards, and 20 is multiplied by the weekly production rate of poor runner boards. The cells containing the values for x1, x2, and x3 are b6, c6, and d6. Recall from the tutorial on Excel basics that we can write this formula using sum product. Click on cell E8 and type equal sign sum product and open the parenthesis. Click on cell B6 and drag to cell D6. Put a comma to separate the two arrays, then click on cell B8 and drag to cell D8. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. The result of the formula at this time is zero because no values have been specified for the decision variables. Next, we carry out a similar sum product step for the left-hand side of each constraint. If you look at the constraints, you will see that we again multiply the decision variables by the coefficients in each constraint. We multiply the row coefficients by the cells containing the weekly production rate of each board, namely B6, C6, and D6, and then sum the total. Therefore, we can use the sum product function for writing these formulas as well. The first array in sum product will be the same for each row. This is the range of decision variable cells B6 to D6. The second array of sum product function for each constraint changes according to the row number. We can therefore use the copy and paste command to fill in cells E11, E12, E13, and E14. To keep the first array the same, we edit the contents of cell E8. We put a dollar sign before and after B and before and after D to keep this range of cells fixed. Then we can simply copy cell E8 and paste it in cells E11 to E14. The values for the left-hand sides of the constraints are also zero at this point because we have not yet assigned non-zero values to the decision variables. After solving the problem, these cell values will show you the total amount of each resource that is consumed for a particular set of values of the decision variables. These amounts should be less than or equal to the amount of each resource available that appears in column G. We have filled the cells E11 to E14 with colors to make it easier to find them when you return to the spreadsheet later. Cells F11 to F14 show the types of the constraints. These cells will not play a role in solving the problem with solver. They are just reminders of the types of the constraints. The values in cells G11 to G14 show the right-hand side values for the constraints, which are the amount available of each resource. Right now, your spreadsheet is completed and you have all the required inputs. At this point, it is helpful to explore the spreadsheet and the formulas in it before we start working with Solver. Let's assume that the weekly production rate for sporty, fancy, and pool runner boards are 10, 100, and 50 respectively. We can write these values in cells B6, C6, and D6 and check the result. When you write the values in these cells, the formulas we have written earlier will yield the results for the total profit which is in cell E8. 
and for each of the constraints in cells E11, E12, E13, and E14. You can see that this is a feasible solution because all the inequality constraints are satisfied. With this production mix, the Skateman Incorporation makes a total profit of $4,650 per week. This production plan uses 1,750 minutes of the 2,400 available shaping time, 320 of the 700 available trucks, 700 of the 840 available North American maple veneers, and 420 of the 1,470 available Chinese maple veneers. Now let's try a different set of values for the decision variables. This time, we want to have a weekly production rate of 45 for sporty boards, 200 for fancy boards, and 10.5 for poor runner boards. Although this set of values yield a higher profit, which is $7,885 per week, this is not a feasible solution because two of the constraints were violated. This solution needed 3,267 minutes of shaping time, but there is only 2,400 minutes available. The constraint on North American maple veneers is also violated. This solution would require 1,400 veneers, but there are only 840 available North American maple veneers. You can also plug in your own preferred values for the decision variables in the spreadsheet and see how you can improve the objective function without violating any of the constraints. Now we are ready to use Solver to find the optimal values of the decision variables which yield a feasible solution as well. Before the problem can be solved, parameters need to be set up in the Solver program. These parameters include all of the parts of the problem formulation, the decision variables, the objective function, and the constraints. Solver needs to be told where in the spreadsheet each set of information is located. First, click on the cell containing the sum product of the objective function, which is E8 in this case. Now, go to the Data menu and click on the Solver icon. A Solver Parameters window comes up with the target cell being $E$8. Notice that the target cell is the cell in which the total value objective function is defined. The dollar signs are automatically inserted by Solver and merely indicate the specific cell. If cell E8 containing the objective function is not already selected, when this window is open, select it now. The objective for this problem is to maximize profit, therefore make sure the max circle is filled in. Next look at the by changing variable cells title. This is the solver's name for decision variables. Solver needs to be told that the decision variable cells are B6, C6 and D6. To do so, type in B6 colon D6 which shows the range of cells from B6 to D6. Alternatively, you can click on cell B6 and drag to cell D6. Solver will add dollar signs in the cell names and you can leave them as they are. Now click on the box labeled subject to the constraints. The constraints will be added one at a time. Click add. Another window will appear titled Add Constraint. As we discussed before, the value of the formula in cell E11 should be less than or equal to the value in cell G11. To specify this, type 11 into cell reference. Alternatively, you can click on cell E11. Now type G11 into constraint. Alternatively, you can click on cell G11. The inequality symbol can be changed by using the drop-down menu. In this case, it should be left as the default, which is less than or equal. Click Add and then continue to the next constraint. For the truck availability constraint, E12 should be less than or equal to G12. So type E12 into cell reference 
and G12 into constraint and then click add. For the North American maple veneers constraint, E13 should be less than or equal to G13. So type E13 into cell reference and G13 into constraint and then click add. For the Chinese maple veneers constraint, E14 should be less than or equal to G14. So type E14 into cell reference and G14 into constraint and then click OK. When finished, the constraints should be listed in the subject to the constraints box in the solver parameters window. There's also an easier way to add the constraints instead of adding them one by one. In this example, all of the resource constraints are of the same type of inequality. They are all less than or equal to. Therefore, we can add constraints all at once. To do that, click on the Subject to the Constraints box, click Add. Now type E11 colon E14 into cell reference. Alternatively, you can click on cell E11 and drag to cell E14. Now type G11 colon G14 into constraint. Alternatively, you can click on cell G11 and drag to cell G14. Then click OK. Notice that the non-negative constraints were not included in this spreadsheet because Solver has a shortcut for adding them. Under the Subject to the Constraints box, check Make Unconstrained Variables Non-Negative. In other versions of Excel, such as Excel 2007, this constraint can be found in the options. You can click on options and then check the box for assume non-negative. To solve this linear programming problem, solver must use the simplex method. Therefore, in the select a solving method drop-down menu, select simplex LP. Again, in other versions of Excel like Excel 2007, this can be found in the options. You can click on Options and then check the box for Assume Linear Model. Now click on the Options button in the Solver Parameters window. In the All Methods tab, check the box that says Use Automatic Scaling. Also check the box that says Ignore Integer Constraints. Make sure the constraint precision is at most 0 0.80 after the decimal point 1. Finally, set the maximum time, which is in seconds, to 100 and iterations to 100. Then click OK. Now you're ready to solve the problem. Click Solve. The Solver Results window appears. This window shows various options to choose. For now, on the right side of the window, click on Answer, Sensitivity and Limits. We will explore these options later. Click OK. The optimal solution appears in cells B6, C6, and D6. Notice that X1 has a final value of 0, X2 has a final value of 104, and X3 has a final value of 210. Thus, the optimal product mix calls for producing no sporty skateboards, 104 fancy skateboards, and 210 pool runner skateboards per week. With this product mix, Skateman Incorporation will make a weekly profit of $7,840. Also notice that the required shaping time for this product mix is 2400 minutes, which is the total available. The amount of trucks used is 628. The amount of North American maple veneers used is 728. And the amount of Chinese maple veneers used is 1470.